This internationally known sculptor's works range from large-scale steel pieces to intricate miniatures. Her sculptures are bold and often colorful, reflecting and harmonizing with their sights. But they always have an exuberant energy that expresses the sculptor's delight in making art. On this edition of Art Now, we'll look at the work of Christiana T. Martins. Welcome to Art Now, a program where we talk to artists whose work is part of our community. I'm Pat Salmon, and I'll be your host today. Our guest today is sculptor Christiana T. Martins. Born in Germany, she has a BAE from the University of Bonn in Berlin in Germany and an MFA in sculpture from the University of Notre Dame in Indiana. Now a professor emeritus from the University of Illinois School of Art and Design, her sculptures have won national competition awards in Alaska, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, Maryland, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Illinois, as well as an international award in Japan. She has been invited to present her work at art institutions in Italy, Germany, and Canada, as well as in the U.S. Thanks for allowing us to come to your home today, Chris. <laughs> well, herzlich willkommen. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. I'd like to start by talking about yeah. how you became interested in becoming an artist because it wasn't a traditional path. <laughs> That's true. Well, I might say that uh, I started quite late and I took my first sculpture class when I was 27 years old. Wow. <laughs> and it, there was a long way of uh, living in different countries mm. and uh, growing up in uh, Germany, growing up being born in the East. Yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, being a refugee coming to West Germany. And um, I pursued an educational career at first, mm -hmm. education-wise at least, and uh, it was an emphasis on the crafts, on the arts. And then I took an additional class on crafts, Werken it was called, uh, in uh, Düsseldorf, where we learned all kinds of materials to manipulate or to mm -hmm. get to know oh, yeah. and I brought a couple of examples out mm -hmm. uh, like we had to cut from two square pieces mm. uh, hammer them into a, a perfect sphere wow. so we learned something about brass and metal we learned book binding textiles uh, mm -hmm. ceramics etc yeah. so I came with that background um, over to the United States with an inter intersecting year of being in France. But, mm -hmm. uh, and my first um, place uh, was in North Carolina, where I was the traveling art teacher. Mm -hmm. So I taught all grades, all shades, I would say, mm -hmm. which was a marvelous year and fabulous introduction, as I showed you with the book yes. that I summarized um, the work in. And, um, from there, uh, we went to Notre Dame, and by pure um, chance, I walked by the modern language department and knocked at the door and asked if they needed somebody to teach German. Mm -hmm. They said it's exactly what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. So the combination of being uh, able to teach German, though I was not studying German, mm -hmm. uh, it allowed me to I know to pursue a study in the arts, in yeah. art and fine art. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I was there for four years mm -hmm. with the uh, wonderful sculptor Konstantin Milanadis, a kinetic uh, stainless steel sculptor, mm -hmm. small scale, mm -hmm. with the yeah beautiful movement, beautiful, mm -hmm. elegant uh, uh, pieces. A um, sculptor from uh, Chicago Art Institute, but uh, with a long, very interesting history behind him. Um, and yes, and from there, it developed into an actual career. I never thought it would become a career. I loved mm -hmm. it, but I wasn't sure if this could really be me and if I could actually make art and be out in the, in, in the world. But um, Constantine Melanatis encouraged me to put my sculptures out in competitions, in small competitions, mm -hmm. and I won awards, and I thought, oh, 
And also, they don't all end up in my, my basement. And right. so, <laughs> so uh, one uh, led to another, etc. And all of a sudden, you pile up a um, good amount of uh, professional activity mm -hmm. and jobs offered. <laughs> uh, so I. Yeah, so this is how it came about. And then by teaching art and design, mm -hmm. I could develop really my career in, in sculpture. Mm -hmm. And that's when also these competitions came about, the public art co uh, competition, the big projects yes. that were generated by the program of art and architectural art in public places or percent for art, however. Yeah. And this came about in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, every state handled it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, many states allowed out-of-state artists to participate. Illinois, for mm -hmm. example, does not. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily Illinois artists. There are plenty of them here. So, right, right. <laughs> uh, so and that's how it built up. Yeah. You know, the whole work in you know in the last decades. <laughs> I did want to mention, uh, we have an interesting photo here from your childhood, <laughs> and you kind of had a natural interest in building and making things, correct? Yes, that was the big thing. And at, uh, looking back uh, at uh, images, there were just a few images of, of me sitting on my grandfather's chicken coop, and mm -hmm. I'm taking the measuring stick apart. Mm -hmm. And as I showed you a few images later, uh -huh. I managed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so this was a quite <laughs> a marker <laughs> right. in retrospect. Right. Uh, so yes, uh, the part was that I did uh, like to make things as physically make things, and that's probably why it led to sculpture. I, early on, grade sc uh, elementary school, built little um, Bavarian houses that with a chimney th <laughs> that allowed money to be put oh, in yeah. as a piggy bank. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so uh, my family always would say, oh, Crystal, me, bastard, which is very hard to translate, but mm -hmm. it is like construct something, <laughs> ah, okay. makes something, makes something. Make something. Right. But make something primarily three dimensional. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, painting I liked as well, but that was. The real thing for me, right? So, yeah, and out of that, uh, I think it became more apparent that that is probably what holds me the most, and it's right. also the biggest challenge because right. to create objects uh, that have, you know, that have these properties of being able to walk around, look from them from the top, from the side, mm -hmm. etc. Everything has to. Uh, has you know it has multiple perspectives, right. so uh, you are really engaging in the space right. yeah. of an object, and uh, uh, yeah, and I thought uh, then it had more reality. It was more real to me. Mm -hmm. It was it had the presence, right. and uh, that was exciting. Yeah. Exactly. Now, most of your larger works are in steel and stainless steel. Yes. Uh, what are the qualities of those materials that make them work well for you as an artist? Well. And I think we have a few <laughs> examples. There. Yes. Well, yeah, I, I put some here. Well, for one is, uh, I like steel because I can cut it, sand it, I can weld it, I can um, yeah, build with it, construct with it, mm -hmm. and take it apart mm -hmm. <laughs> at the same time. And also it has more durability mm -hmm. uh, and it has a possibility to be outdoors. Mm -hmm. But of course, for being outdoors, you have to protect it <laughs> when right. it's mild steel. Mm -hmm. So I have a piece of mild steel. It would have immediately corrode if, you, if it would be outside. Mm -hmm. I have some others here in the house that I heat. Uh, you know, he, treat, he treated it or mm -hmm. oiled it, etc. So mm -hmm. that's not as crucial. But outdoors, you have to protect it with primer and paint. Mm -hmm. And I primarily used car paint, and it has to be renewed mm -hmm. at times. So, yeah. So th of course, when you add then paint, that adds another dimension to the sculpture mm -hmm. and right. the liveliness. Uh, you right. know, a very energetic color to yes. it. So, uh, so it has very. Um, attractive properties. Yeah. And stainless steel 
and uh, it's of course for durability it does not rust mm -hmm. but it's very expensive and hard to work with mm -hmm. and it looks extremely dull when you start gray and very very okay. un not very attractive not right. very enhanced but if you do something with it, you use grinders, sanders, and treat the surfaces, and you, you can make these surfaces reflect. And also, again, not like uh, parallel to paint, this brings it alive in right. a different way. Right. And of course, stainless has uh, the uh, added um, aspect of catching the light mm -hmm. and then changing uh, its appearance right. according to the sun position and according to the seasons and right. so that's yeah, something it one different, different times yeah. of the year. Yes, so yeah. something that w one can experience here at Meadowbrook Park. Yes, and we'll be seeing that will be uh, one of the first ones we'll be starting with here. Uh, you're best known for your large public art sculptures and uh, there are two in town that I think most people are familiar with. Uh, we're starting out with Sinatra yeah. Sending. <laughs> yes. Uh, and this is near Beckman. Yes, it's right outside um, uh, in the courtyard of Beckman mm -hmm. against the greenery. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, again, the color being red versus <laughs> green mm -hmm. brings out the sculpture very much. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was call it a jazzy piece. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it shows the kind of the energy and power of, of uh, tsunami waves as mm -hmm. they rise up, turn, etc. And uh, it just shows um, in a artistic, formal way, uh, the the energy that is within. Right. So, okay. This next one is molecular reflections, and this one's over in Meadowbrook Park, as we were just saying. Yes. Uh, we actually have a maquette of it here. <laughs> right. I don't know. I can turn it around. Yeah. Well, it's again, it's not an illustration of a molecule, but right. you know, it's a three-dimensional arrangements of atoms and how they spiral and move around each mm -hmm. other. So, um, uh, you know, it could be a molecule, it be something that maybe is celestial, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it has this abstract quality because it describes something very abstract. And of course we were talking about how it looks different in different seasons, and here's another yes. shot of it uh, during the winter. Yeah, uh, that's the charm. Uh, I think uh, my big, biggest admirer of this piece uh, I was told were two deer that were standing in front of it being completely <laughs> mesmerized by the reflection. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah I know. <laughs> uh, my neighbors reported to me, you That's cannot great. believe the two were just... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So that was, yeah, also, you know, when you go by, it can be uh, look somber, it can be look extremely reflectant you have to you know have right. to have your eyeglasses on yeah. so it takes on its own life and I think that's what I really enjoy with stainless yes. outdoors yeah. so it has had many lives so to say right. yeah right. so uh, yeah that's uh, and also the surfaces are sanded in different uh, uh, with different textures as mm -hmm. you could see here in my sculpture in the back mm -hmm. uh, and so it has this the pieces not only by shape but also by texture are right. distinguished from one right. to the other. So, right. yeah. <laughs> uh, now, one of your most spectacular pieces is this next one that you did for the University of Alaska Museum. It's Denali. Um, you can see the mountains in the background, and the pieces on the left. And uh, it was sort of reflecting and echoing the mountains, I think. That's right. Yeah. And well, I have several pictures here. This is just one. Uh, we also have this one yes. that's a little closer to the museum. Yeah, it's the Museum of the North mm -hmm. in, in Alaska. It has since been reconstructed, mm -hmm. the museum itself, but the sculpture uh, is still at the same place. Mm -hmm. And indeed, it was a big commission uh, uh, project that uh, was, uh, that I, the news I got by accident, mm -hmm. through, actually through a student handing it to me and said, Chris, here's something else for you to do <laughs> in South oh, Dakota. Yeah, <laughs> well, it was only my third piece, so I was, you know, four and a half thousand miles away from <laughs> the yeah. final location. It so the, <laughs> the logistics and yes. uh, to build a monumental piece of 21 yes. feet in height. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. the tan, so yeah. uh, was uh, fabulous. Since these are site-specific pieces, so yes. called, something that relates to Alaska, and I was looking at images about Alaska never having been there, mm -hmm. and I found in National Geographic a uh, wonderful image of the Alaska uh, Brooks Mountain Range, mm. which is nearby, mm. and the endless wilderness. Mm -hmm. So stacking mountain on mountain, and you know, yes. 90%, 95% of the mountains have never been climbed in Alaska. Wow. <laughs> so, so, and to bring this monumentality uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to bear, mm -hmm. I, I was uh, putting them on top of each other at the same time. Um, it, they, curved. it curved. And, when we see another photograph, yes. Uh, uh, I, well, this next one, of course, yes. is showing the, 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 back. the different side. Different, yeah, yeah, different side. The back is totally straight. Shapes are completely straight and open. And you can mm -hmm. see, uh, I did it for different purposes. One of which was not to build up snow mm -hmm. in between the levels, so that it would even you know bear more weight and <laughs> collapse. And collapse. Yeah, yeah, you know. Be, uh, stable, so it, the the uh, it does exactly that. The snow is sliding <laughs> yeah, I can through see it. That. Yeah, the snow and light yeah. comes through it. Right. So mm -hmm. and here's another view. Yes, so you can see the the front is almost like a rectangle, you know, mm -hmm. almost like a cutout of the of the image. Mm -hmm. of the, mm -hmm. um, uh, and when you stand in front of it, and I don't know if you have another picture. Uh, it is monumental. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And we've got another, yeah. another one yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, it is almost a bit. Yeah, it commands <laughs> attention. Yes, yes, well, with three tons, it's yeah, yeah. this big. <laughs> yeah, so it has, um, what I said before, real presence. So, right. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Now, this next sculpture was created for the state printing plant in Salem, Oregon, and it's called Paper Wave. Yes, I might add one thing oh, yes, with regard to Denali. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, the, the title is Big Mountain, mm -hmm. and it's an Athabascan Indian name uh, for Mount McKinley. Ah, so, okay. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. And if you fly to Alaska, you know, sometimes you see the Big Mountain, Mount McKinley mountain range right. above the clouds. Right. 20,000 feet feet high, right. truly monumental. Yes. So I wanted to give the title <laughs> to, the to the piece, piece. Yeah, to, to uh, highlight that. Okay, yes, well, this paper one is wave. Paper wave. Yes. Uh, and I, th I brought this one up particularly because I think we wanted to also see uh, the, some of the engineering that goes into this. Yes, well it shows a bit how I work. I uh, have an idea fiddle in my studio with either with bo board, paper, or steel, mm -hmm. uh, and come to some kind of a form that finally seems to be right mm -hmm. uh, in relationship uh, in this instance here for my state printing plant. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to do something that looks like paper goes through the printing press Yes, on a l large scale. Right. But to translate that into uh, real steel, mm -hmm. uh, I then draw it very precisely and then calculate everything. So mm -hmm. that the model is only the first step. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in order to produce it, of course, when they get that big, you don't produce them anymore by yourself. So yeah. you have to give very clear instructions and the instructions right. are and look right, like all engineering. Right, yeah. fit together exactly. Yes, and yeah. exactly the size. <laughs> it's your piece, Chris. So, you know. yeah, 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 so, <laughs> so you're responsible yes. for it. Yes, and th this yeah. piece also was then shipped in a number of parts mm -hmm. and then uh, joined. Uh, yeah. I, I did that over there. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that, that's basically my method. So uh, in high school, my favorite subject was art and mathematics. Mm -hmm. And uh, though I completely forgot about these, <laughs> that uh, geometry, it came to came to the forefront when I had to build actually something for real and for large and for lasting right. <laughs> right. purposes, uh, and so I sort of entered this into my uh, my process of making work, yeah. and that has been very um, helpful, yeah. very important. I thought people might want to see how much yeah. work goes into this. Yeah, calculating a bit right. <laughs> and drawing it, right. drawing it with. 
<laughs> well, compass, etc. Okay. Not on the computer <laughs> yet. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> this piece was done for the Pioneer International Headquarters in uh, Princeton, Illinois. And I particularly like this one because of the way water is, is a part of it. Uh, yes. It's called Greenfield. Yes. Um, well, they asked me to come there and they had a little area and they said they would like to have something in this area at the entrance mm -hmm. that again related to them. Mm -hmm. So what could relate to them? So I decided I build a grain field mm -hmm. and I built a grain field ended up of 4,000 individual pieces and mm -hmm. they were done um, with this plus. Is one this of is one of them, <laughs> one of the 200 pieces. Yeah. Uh, so I welded them with the plasma welder. We used electron beam welder in the uh, on campus and the research area and um, spot welder. Mm -hmm. And at the end of each of uh, these um, grain elements uh, comes an atomizing spray nozzle. Very, mm -hmm. very, very, very tiny. Yeah. Try, tried X many of them, right. to make a fine mist. And the photograph shows the fine mist. Mm -hmm. So as a fine haze that would rise up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And also it should, from any angle, you would see the sculpture that it has movement, that mm -hmm. it has this kind of subtle energy in the field. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I learned with that sculpture mm -hmm. uh, is in order to, to uh, uh, parallel nature, you have to be extremely precise because mm -hmm. when I was setting them up, if the, if the uh, grain element was tiny, a tiny bit off, it mm -hmm. didn't look right. It was mm -hmm. immediately mm -hmm. noticeable. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So you have to be extremely precise to follow nature. So <laughs> <laughs> and it's in stainless steel and it has a um, computerized um, checked water supply that goes yes. through the tank. Long story, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, uh, to create something with water is quite another yeah. task. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's and a new another element to take yes. into account. Yes, yes, it's a, um, yeah. But uh, we all want sculptures that spit and <laughs> do <Right>. things <laughs> like this, and bring yeah. life that way right. you know, <laughs> into it. So. Yeah. Okay, this next piece can be seen at the Botanical Center in Des Moines. Uh, this is Spectral Liberation. Yes. Again, a theme was given. It was the rainbow. The person mm -hmm. who in, was highly engaged in the, mm -hmm. the Botanical Garden, her symbol was the rainbow. So it, okay. uh, so they had 85 rainbows proposals. Oh, my goodness. So, <laughs> <laughs> just well, rainbow proposals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, this picture doesn't... Sh we have some others. Anyway, mm -hmm. the, uh, the only the sides are painted, and the mm -hmm. sides are painted in a different way on one side, and mm -hmm. on uh, the the color scale on the back is a double rainbow. So they are not mm -hmm. identical. Okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, basically, these are stainless steel arcs that are painted on the side. A little bit more unusual. Mm -hmm. The reason for it, the uh, uh, these colors, mm -hmm. depending again on the angle of the sun, mm -hmm. would reflect on the stainless steel surfaces inside. Ah, okay. right. uh, I'm not so sure. So it will look different. Yes, at different it, times. Or it, it it can be very luminous. Yeah. The uh, and, and multiply the colors. Mm -hmm. So which, mm -hmm. and when they had the opening, it just happened exactly. It just did it exactly. <laughs> did oh, okay. exactly that, which was wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, they have restored it, and it was just repainted and okay. re-set uh, up again. Art needs maintenance. <laughs> yes, it does. And here's, an, here's another view of it in during yes. the winter. During the winter, it was actually sent to me <laughs> here and there. And, you know, that's another aspect. You right. find your work in AAA tour books. Or that's <laughs> or right. Yes, yes. We actually found it on the yes. cover of it. By AAA accident, AAA yeah. Tour or the... <laughs> <laughs> or the um, Des Moines telephone book uh, announced to you. So uh, public art takes its own course if it's really um, accepted or liked by right, exactly. by the general yeah, that public. Shows the community yeah, community is really it, interested it is, and liked it. Uh, there's uh, can be references and postcards that people make sure. photographers that sure. make. Yeah. So you see the inside. You can see a little bit uh, the stainless steel on um, on the inside here. Right. Okay, this next one is in front of the Rolling Terrace Elementary School in Maryland. It's called Turning Point. Turning Point, yes. 
Well, I wanted something that was playful mm -hmm. for children, mm -hmm. and uh, so this came about. <laughs> uh, we do have a picture here of a small and large, but I guess okay. later. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it consists, I, I have a small mock-up here and on the deck. Oh, yeah. okay. But uh, with the f those um, spiraling pieces mm -hmm. in front and back, they are not there. But yeah, okay. so playful colors, uh, basic elementary, right. uh, joyful, cheerful. As mm -hmm. I want, in fact, for most of my outer pieces, they have to be something that connects with you in a in a very light way, mm -hmm. sort of, as they say, inspire. But you know, mm -hmm. make you feel. Okay. Yes. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. And then this final work here, a large work, is uh, won the prize for excellence at the Fuji San Sanke. Is that correct? Yeah, Fuji Sanke. Biennial <laughs> in, in 1993, which was an international competition conducted by the Hakone Open Air Museum, Museum yeah. in Japan. Yes. And it was it's called Nocturnal Orbits. Yeah, it's at the Uchi. Kushigahara Open Air Museum, which <laughs> is stumbling <laughs> over the <Yeah. laughs> Japanese names. Yes, and it was a thrill. It, there were 1,300 um, people to try to get to uh, this um, competition, and they selected 25. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I was chosen, I couldn't believe the <laughs> mail. <laughs> and it was built here in Champaign. Uh -huh. uh, and I had already you know, um, sent a steel ver version. We will see the steel version here. Ah, great, yes. Yeah. When we go to the other room. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, uh, yeah, so it um, was then from, uh, shipped from here um, via truck and plane wow. to uh, Japan. And yeah. then I was invited and could uh, invite a guest, which was my friend. Uh, the former director of Japan House, Kimiko Gunji, oh, who also helped me to write in to the uh, sculpture the name in Japanese, ah, including mine. Yes, so yes. the Fuji television, when they filmed it, mm -hmm. you know, they focused and they could read it. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> Which is great. Well, nocturnal orbits, you know, it leads a little bit into what, uh, you know, my big interests as of late is. Uh, next we're going to move on to your wall reliefs, but first, uh, yeah. We just want to show yeah. a bit of what your studio looks like before you start working on the That's wall. That's right. Rooms. It does not look very appealing. And <laughs> you know, it's not like a painter's studio with colors which look like fun, but this is, yeah, just dra yeah. drabby steel. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but you start with that, and yes. then you end up with uh, well, wall reliefs like yeah. the first one, yeah, Eternal that's right. Voyager. Eternal Voyager, which has, um, then I'm st I started to add some other materials on when working on or working on a small scale, mm -hmm. these were feathers that my father found, and mm -hmm. this was in commemoration to his death. It's called, as you said, right. Eternal Voyager. Yeah, yeah. It's so a beautiful piece. And I was working with stainless, but I was coloring stainless mm -hmm. through heat, okay. Okay. etc. Okay. So yeah. uh, manipulating truly the material in a different way, not just grinding, right. grinding to sanding to. Right. Yes. This one is called so, Cosmic Pathways. Yes, this is uh, one of a series of nine pieces that mm -hmm. are at Wells Fargo Bank uh, in South Dakota. I recently mm -hmm. visited it, and yeah, these are pieces that one of which is here, this mm -hmm. one, uh, in real color. So, yes, Cosmic Pathways. Okay. <laughs> this one is a musical memo. Yeah, well, I was thinking <laughs> <laughs> of... Um, of uh, striking musical note, yeah. Mm, okay. So yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So. And this is wind blown pathways. Pathways. Yeah. This uh, sculpture actually belongs to the former director of Beckman. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Dr. Brown. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, it. I cannot say more. You yeah, know, okay. it's just very hard to, <laughs> right. to say. Yeah, you, right. you see it, and I mean the titles are in many ways just a hint of what maybe my original idea was, but right. essentially is what you see. It's, right. you know, it's like music, what's the title of music? Do you like the song? You know? <laughs> right. Do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> so, 
melody. Yeah, yeah. this is. Now this was wing formation. Yes, uh, just like birds mm -hmm. flying through the lightly through the sky. Yeah. Or now, where is this one? Yeah, this one is at the. Um, Aviation Institute, Institute of Aviation mm -hmm. near Willard. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I was kind of fascinated to build something essentially out of one piece repeating. Mm -hmm. And it had a flow, mm -hmm. it had a flow bird or yes. a plane or, yes. uh, but it uh, you know, defied gravity in a way. Right. Uh, and so it came like a, yeah, mm -hmm. like a flack of birds. Exactly, <laughs> I was just gonna say it looks like so, a flag. Uh, the picture unfortunately does not show um, the colors in, mm -hmm. in it okay. um, because it has it's quite colorful oh, or okay. the yeah. quite, uh, similar to the eternal voyager type yeah okay. but <laughs> okay. to scale and yeah. this last one is not a wall piece but it's yes. a smaller sculpture you've done it's called silver flames silver flames yes and uh, there are a few versions right behind right. <laughs> behind you so the silver flame yeah it was originally for a proposal in oops in wisconsin yeah i think this is wisconsin okay. uh but uh yeah uh, but in the end they uh, chose a, a land art piece so mm. So I build it in stainless steel, and you, when one compares, uh, they are quite different in appearance and, mm -hmm. and feel to it. Yes. So yes. the soft background of the of the dark, you know, it's just yeah, it's, it's just it's a dark, it's right. just the mild steel oh, that okay. I so yeah no that coloring, I kept yeah the coloring and uh, gun blowing etc. So yes. all the tricks of the trade <laughs> 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 that make it a you know okay. vivid. And now we're going to look at some sm <laughs> even smaller sculptures that you did recently that were at the cinema, and they kind of reflect either environmental or political themes, but this fir first one is just kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, under review, <laughs> right? Under, under review, yes. <laughs> yes, I was looking at here um, at a hard drive, and mm -hmm. so it was high technology and entertainment with a Mickey Mouse to take a look at. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, this one is King of Experiment. Yeah, King of the Experiment. It was the latest in uh, being more with researchers together and I, go, I always like to snoop around labs and see <laughs> it is fun, objects. It? <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, you know, collect some things and <laughs> I put out. And so I, I found these kind of burn up uh, um, spirals and mm -hmm. but you know, this kind of triumphant right, <laughs> king right. on top. Right, so. exactly. Okay, this so. one is depository. Depository, yeah, how we um, accumulate or keep knowledge. On the one hand, the actual th objects themselves still mm -hmm. in museums. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, all of our knowledge is stored in chips and, you know, right, electronically. So, you've got the so. Real thing on the left and yeah, the, the other part. The virtual yeah, things on the right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. The question is, which one will last longer? Mm. I have a I have a hunch. <laughs> <laughs> now this one's called Ocean Harvest. Ocean Harvest, yeah. Well, it's an obvious statement of what we are doing with our oceans. Yeah, which is really the, sad. It's extreme pollution and yeah. ruining marine life. Yeah. So that was that statement, and so I stuffed my my steel wiring into the poor shell. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Okay, this is, what are we hatching? Yes, it's an actual bird nest, and people would come up and say, oh, and then something was shining out, you know, glimmer mm -hmm. uh, pieces, and uh, uh, then they looked more closely, no, it was not an egg, it was ammunition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are we hatching? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, a statement, question mark. Right, and then this is shot. Similar theme, I might add. I did uh, attend a, a seminar at the Aspen Institute on the environment and mm -hmm. opened my eyes. And I think mm -hmm. at some time later, this really generated even more mm -hmm. um, concern about right. what is going on, you know, right. a direct view of, of our world. So, right. so and these were collected feathers, uh, and I'd say the uh, uh, eagle feathers are uh, f uh, not eagle. They are turkey feathers that are mm. speckled, so they mm. are not real. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and empty shells, again, 
the diminishing of the world, uh, the animal world. Right. Next, we're going to move on to something a little different. This isn't yes. actually your work, but this is a class that you taught. It was ah, art and yeah, public we places. Can, yeah. Um, and this was a very popular course. It was open to students from all colleges, not just art students. Uh, and one of the things they had to do to complete this course was to create a sculpture out of cardboard and display it on the quad. Uh, so just we'll, we'll look at some of these pieces <laughs> yes, and then you can just quickly, uh, talk a little yeah. bit about the, uh, the students and, yes. and how they enjoyed the course. Uh, this first one, uh, I don't know if these actually have title titles. Yeah. Uh, this, this was I, I call it Revenge of the Ant. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that, so that was right. Just, uh, well, uh, it was open to everybody on campus, mm -hmm. so I felt, I feel art is, you know, for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you only sing maybe once in a school opera or something, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it uh, really uh, is important to let these kind of um, yeah. artistic forces out. And, yeah, yeah, and kind uh, of broaden your mind. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I had a, an array of students from from English to chemical engineering to architecture, mm -hmm. uh, and they all were on the same playing mm -hmm. field. We mm -hmm. looked at uh, uh, contemporary art. We went to sculptural uh, parks, mm -hmm. and uh, then, but the focus was that they had to create a work that was larger than themselves mm -hmm. for. A display on the quad for one day and they had to be there with the piece mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. answer questions yeah. and uh, we did it in corrugated cardboard mm -hmm. and it was uh, cardboard as you can see is quite disguised mm -hmm. uh, glue and tape very inexpensive inexpensive materials but it had to have an interesting idea mm -hmm. so uh, that was one of them was the, the uh, students said they tortured an, uh, little ants when they were little with um, magnifying glass mm -hmm. and burned them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so that's the revenge, revenge of, of the, the ants. Ant. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and this one is called identity. Yes, identity. Basically, it is a fingerprint mm -hmm. with. And this uh, was uh, displayed in, in, at Cranard, right? Yes, yeah. right at the. Outside, uh, the, the stairs. Yeah. yeah, outside where the stairs right. are in the back. Yeah, very interesting piece, uh, and it also had lettering on top. It was a, a poem. poem. I think you said, yeah. Yes, a poem, and I had uh, students allow had them, uh, allow students that other people worked on their pieces because mm. they were overwhelming. The amount of work was mm -hmm. just. You know, oftentimes they would say, that's all the, that's the only class I have now. <laughs> Stakes day yeah. and night, etc. Yeah. But, um, and struggle. I mean, it was really tough. But yeah. then the outcome was that they had never felt, you know, so rewarded in a way. And yeah. they engaged fam uh, classmates, students, but also family. And right. parents would come down. Yes. The parents would come down even to construct it, mm -hmm. in, in this case in particular. And they brought actually families together in some ways, yeah. and uh, so th it was uh, it was a tough class, but it was a class I don't think they will forget. Yeah, it was meaningful <laughs> to them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they said a test is fast done, but this is you know <laughs> quite a different story. Right, exactly. And they had to record it and also make a little booklet out of it, oh, how okay. ide ideas came about, how the um, processed it, etc., and right. the outcome and yeah. their view and what they heard from others and yeah. so on. Yeah. So it was really s similar to building an uh, outdoor sculpture. Right. And I, d I just basically explained how I've done it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. This one is called Seam Stress. <laughs> That's right. She was, as a chemical engineering student, who was taking a stand in terms of the fact that crafts is disappearing further, mm -hmm. uh, qu quicker as yeah. uh, as Things technology, mass yeah, produced, yeah, mass produced and technology right. uh, comes in. So it's a, a very thoughtful mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is music from within. Yeah, really, actually, a very beautiful piece. Um, um, a person or <laughs> sort of in internalizes music mm -hmm. uh, by an architecture student. Yeah. Uh, 
Now this is the zipper. Yeah, the zipper. I guess it was in relationship with university does. Uh -huh. <laughs> opens you or closes you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of them were humorous. But yes. uh, yeah, yes. the, uh, but uh, you know, if you spend uh, days on this, you really want to bring about something that makes sense. Right. <laughs> Right. Despite the fact that we had no space to build it, despite, you know, I right. built it sometimes. We had, we had uh, Lincoln Hall, but often uh, more years we had no space. And I would say it's just like the artist. He, you know, you don't come into the world with a studio attached right. to you. Right, exactly. <laughs> so you have to find a place to and, work. And, and we had uh, one, I remember, uh, actually several places where a farmer opened, they can come. Yeah. And so we had a whole group of people on that farm. And wow. it was in the fall, it was cold, it was, I mean, it was all the, mm -hmm. oh, the, doesn't matter, we can wear the white stuff. Yeah. <laughs> there was, and then he actually helped them truck all that's great. back. So and it's, that's it great. was a very uh, community uh, connection. And, you know, when we had the exhibitions, it was always in the, you know, papers and uh, right. oftentimes right. on oh, TV. People and, look forward yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a fun. Oh, they're out there again. Right, exactly. <laughs> Well, here's so, just a few more. Uh, yeah, the unexpected. Well, it's actually called unexpected. Yeah. yeah so, and he yeah. built the Titanic. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's great. Okay, I'm gonna move through a few. Yes. Of these. Uh, the oh, one was a chair. Yeah. The, uh, these are chairs uh, that were based on artist work. This is Guernica by mm -hmm. Picasso. So yeah. the shapes. Uh, right. uh, Kandinsky, oops, oops uh, yeah, Kandinsky. another, yeah, Kandinsky. Okay. So taking the forms, a part of the painting, and putting them into um, a structure that also allows you to sit on it. Right. So, and then there is also a Warhol. Uh, Marilyn, one here. yeah, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe, and you can see the front is the seat. Right. It's actually quite monu quite large. I mean, yeah. it's almost as tall as a person. Yeah. So very striking uh, yes. pieces. And th yes. that was my last class, and the students insisted they wanted to be on the quad with them. Oh, of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's so, great. Yeah. So, okay. Well, now that you're yeah. retired, I know yeah. that your interest has moved to an, from art to a different area, which is astronomy. Uh, so we're going to take a move, moment now and move to the room where you, uh, that you've dedicated to this interest. Okay, uh, we're here in Chris's astronomy room. Uh, why don't you show us some of the equipment and resources you have here? Well, the briefly. obvious ones are here some telescopes. Uh, this mm -hmm. is my first baby telescope. This one here is uh, on loan. Uh, I am in the astronomy club now and have a wonderful friend who has quite a lot of them and uh, mm -hmm. he yeah. allows me to use this. Right. Um, Yes, but I went back to uh, early astronomy <laughs> this summer and had to buy Ooh. you know, kind of uh, a yeah. telescope as Galileo <laughs> right. used uh, to uh -huh. see the Jupiter moons. And uh, I think the, the, one of the big, biggest excitements so far has been to go out on my deck and look mm -hmm. at Ju Jupiter by myself and mm -hmm. long and behold see the little diamonds next to Jupiter, the four moons. Mm -hmm. And this was the Galileo moment right. <laughs> and, and uh, not didn't take long, maybe an hour or two or less, I realized one moon was missing. So that meant something was uh, they were moving, mm -hmm. so they were maybe one was in the shadow of of the moon, etc. Right. And uh, that, of course, led us away from our centric idea of the world. Right. <laughs> there was more out there, right. and uh, yeah. And uh, with this one, I, 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 you know, no computerized um, mm -hmm. um, sighting of the of the stars, but looking at Saturn and seeing the, you know, seeing the rings. So those were, I mean, I have never experienced it, and mm -hmm. to do it right out was fabulous. It's anyway, I, I decided this room is going to be dedicated to astronomy. And mm -hmm. as you can see here, plenty of books. None of these existed before, mm -hmm. and courses that I bought. <laughs> and I'm following astronomy on all levels now. That's so, great. Uh, 
I think it's the biggest story in the world. All right. <laughs> uh, you do have a few sculptures here that are, are astronomy related, so if you want to just briefly talk. Yeah, this about is those. a uh, s the small version of uh, that work we saw earlier. In yeah, the yeah. J Japan piece, but also one of these pieces is uh, uh, in Japan, in Tokyo. Mm. In fact. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, several others are as well, mm -hmm. but yeah, and uh, the relationship of these very dark uh, painted surfaces versus uh, images of mm -hmm. uh, of actual um, galaxies. Uh, yes, yeah. all uh, nurture, you know when galaxies are, are being born, as right. we say, the kind of the right. uh, um, the birthplace of them. And uh, also here for galaxies. And I went to Arizona to Kitt Peak based mm -hmm. on uh, Professor Kaler's suggestion. Uh, where right, should you took one his course, go? Right? Yes. Yeah. Where should one go to see um, you know, the sky eye to eye? Mm -hmm. And he suggested Kitt Peak. So I spent with some friends a whole mm -hmm. night looking. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. And um, of course, some do it better with cameras. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. And uh, you know, take these pictures. Of course, these are with different filters, etc. So you, right. so you obtain the colors. Right. Yes. Now you have a sculpture. Yeah, the future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I call it the future arrived. It was you know, with a hard, with a hard drive and mm -hmm. whew, like a comet right. like, <laughs> coming in. And then you have a wonderful piece over here. Yeah, this is a, 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 a really a very old piece. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have repurchased it from a collector in Chicago. And now looking, now that I'm so um, uh, overwhelmed by astronomy, mm -hmm. I look at this piece and I think it is really a not so bad illustration, not illustration, mm -hmm. but uh, suggestion of how the universe looks like with mm -hmm. its individual stars and mm -hmm. the nebula around it. Mm -hmm. Things that we would not have seen when this sculpture was built 30 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm mentioning numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, now with, you know, with sophisticated infrared telescopes and x-rays and whatnot, right. uh, um, you know, we have layers of the universe that comes about and is visible to right. Right, that we couldn't see before. That could not, yeah, was right. not seen before. Right. So uh, I called it Origins. <laughs> that's great. So it's stainless steel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, sort of the, the, the sculpture for this room. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I understand you've recently been proposed about joining a program that seeks to combine art and ast astronomy to Cosmic Park proposal. You want to say a little bit about that? Yes, well, I, I did a trip, I made a trip to uh, New Mexico telescopes, mm -hmm. and it was a fabulous trip. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, the big um, places I visited was uh, the uh, the very large array. Mm -hmm. And after the tour, somebody tipped on my shoulder and said, "Can I talk to you?" And mm -hmm. I had just given my little card, yeah, card. Uh, yeah. which had the sculpture on it, mm -hmm. and it said below. Um, uh, where art meets astronomy, astronomy. Uh, and had also a little illustration of me looking up at the star stars. Mm. Uh, where is it? It's not here. Oh, oops. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, anyway, so the person said, uh, stop by in the next town. And we sat down, and I had no idea um, what was this was about. Mm -hmm. And I told her my interest in astronomy and mm -hmm. you know, sculptures that I made and um, and I now try to combine in my life art mm -hmm. with astronomy and, right. and they said that's exactly what we are trying to do here. Ah. We want to bring the arts into this area and connect them with the, the sites that yeah. are there in, uh, uh, in New Mexico in that particular place mm -hmm. uh, near Magdalena. And uh, so they uh, uh, asked me if I would be part of the team mm -hmm. <laughs> to uh, create a um, cosmic park. So mm -hmm. there is a cosmic park proposal. <laughs> yeah. ah, okay. So and uh, so that's uh, uh, that's the big story. It happened to be uh, yeah, an art um, 
director from New York City. Yeah. So there's a whole community that generates it. It is something that is, I think, much more um, en vogue in Chile, where the, all the uh, mm. telescopes are located, right. and we, where they have astrotourism. Right. But to, you know, it's one thing to look at the science, but it's another thing to connect that. Right. I exactly. think that's a, it, that brings uh, breathes a different life into it. Right. Uh, and one can sit down and talk, have a coffee, or stay overnight, or yeah. look at an art show that is nearby. Right. And look at the telescopes. Okay. <laughs> so well. this is totally down. You know, right. <laughs> absolutely well, wonderful to find something without a grant, without application. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, that's the joy of retirement. Yeah. Well, yes. thanks again so yes. much, Chris, for um, inviting us in here. I really enjoyed it. Uh, our guest today has been sculptor Christi Christiana T. Martins. Uh, you can see her sculptures in many places in Champaign-Urbana, including Enterprise Works, the Institute of Aviation, the Beckman Institute, in the Mechanical Engineering Building. Uh, the Cinema Gallery in Urbana carries some of her work as well. We hope that you enjoyed today's show, and we also hope it will inspire you to explore the local art scene and to make your own art now. <laughs>